Well, good morning on this beautiful Saturday autumn morning. It is uh, 53 degrees, 56 degrees. It's a little chilly, a little chilly. But we have lots of birthdays today, lots and lots of birthdays today. Because today is Saturday, October 5th. I'm not sure if I said that. I was going on and on about the weather, not telling you what the date was. Today is Saturday, October 5th. We have birthdays. Matthew Clark, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Matthew. Happy birthday to you. Cha -cha -cha. Also, Amy over at Enna's for Nurse. Today is Amy's birthday. <coughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Amy. Happy birthday to you. Cha -cha -cha. Angela, who is the brat over at Smack Vision, uh, she doesn't do YouTube videos anymore, but I know she's on Instagram and I know she's on Facebook. So you can probably find her either one of those two places. Angela Bellino, Molino, M-O-L-I-N-A, I think is her last name. <clears throat> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Angela, the brat. Happy birthday to you. Cha -cha -cha. Well, you know, we were supposed to get together. She was had a plane ticket that was going to come and stay at my house in May of 2020. We all know what happened there. <laughs> it didn't come to be. But anyway... We still keep in touch with each other every once in a while. But it's also Henry Wolfen's birthday, H-E-N-R-I, Henry. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Henry. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. I wonder if it's Andre. Andre? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Andre. Happy birthday to you. Cha-cha-cha. Just in case. I want to make sure I get it right. Mary Vitro. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mary. Happy birthday to you. Cha -cha -cha. RJ, who is um, Kim over the girl on her phone. RJ is her son. I know he doesn't watch my channel, but I know Kim does. So maybe when she sees RJ, she can let him hear this little bit. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear RJ. Happy birthday to you. Cha -cha -cha. And Kathy, who is Kathy Wolsey. L W O L L S E Y. Kathy's birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Kathy. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven birthdays today. And seven is my lucky number because it's my birthday. I always pick seven as my lucky number. But yesterday I missed Amy, who is Laney's Laney's life, Laney's daughter, who is Caden's mother. I forgot to sing to Amy. Well, it's not all my fault because Lainey didn't tell me. But it's Amy's birthday yesterday. So a late birthday. Happy birthday to you. Late. Happy birthday to you. Late. Happy birthday, dear Amy. Happy birthday to you. Cha -cha -cha. Well, I hope you had a great, great birthday. Also, I did mess up somebody's name yesterday because I said it was Alexandria. And I sang to Alexandria. It's Alexandra. She said it didn't really matter because at least I sang to her. No, I didn't. I didn't sing the right name. So we're going to get a second song in here for you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Alexandra. Happy birthday to you. Cha -cha -cha. Well, I hope both of you had a great birthday yesterday. I really don't have very many plans for today. My, I don't have any plans for today, to be honest with you. Um, Jim and I have fallen by the wayside, and we're not walking. Uh, Lori, always Palowski, P-A-W-L-O-W-S-K-I. I think I'm messing up your name, Lori. They walk every day, faithfully, faithfully. But uh, I'm Jim and I are kind of slacking. But I'm hoping to get back on Monday to walking. I'm really looking back into going to the gym because Jim and I are just sitting around too much. We're just sitting around and we just need to get out of the house. We need to get get out a little bit. Tuesday we have Sebastian's football game, so we'll get out at least for that. I'm going to make my second chicken soup of the month, my soup of the month rather, uh, or soup of the week, soup of the week, um, because... Uh, Edie and Joan and Kim and I think Danielle and I are doing a collab in November. And so we're each cooking a soup each week and filming it. And then we're going to just do one video in November to show you all four different soups. So you'll probably get like 20 different soups that you can plan for for the uh, winter months. But this week I am making a chicken and potato 
crock pot soup. I like a crock pot soup better than like a on the stove kind of a soup. I like to just put everything in the crock pot and just let it go, especially since we're going to be going to Sebastian's football game. I get it all ready before we're going to go. And then um, it takes about a half hour to get to where his game is. His game takes about an hour and a half, and then it takes another half hour to get home. So um, that's what I'm going to do. And then I, I wish I could make, you know, I think I'm going to ask for a, I know it's a lazy man way, but I think I'm going to ask for a bread maker for a Christmas present because uh, I do like homemade bread, although it is my downfall. Carbs are my downfall. But I do like a good piece of um, homemade bread. And uh, so I'm going to take some frozen bread <laughs> out of the freezer and let it rise. And then um, we're going to have some homemade bread with the soup. Jim actually had the chili two days in a row. or the taco. I, had two, I know I call it chili. It's called taco soup, what I made last week. Tuesday taco soup, which to me basically was a chili. But um, he ate it two days in a row. Which I was surprised. Jim usually doesn't eat things two days in a row. But he said it was that good, so he ate it. Uh, I'm going to kind of, he doesn't like, he says he doesn't like cream cheese, but um, the the recipe for the chicken potato soup calls for cream cheese. And I'm thinking if he doesn't know what's in there, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. And then uh, his, we're going to, Jimmy's birthday is tomorrow. He's going to be 52. That's not possible. I was just 52. So it's not possible that I have a son that's 52. But tomorrow is his birthday, but we're not doing his birthday till Thursday. We're going to do his and Jim's together. He surprised me because he usually picks ham, and he picked a roast. So we're going to have a, what we call my family a mean roast, which is just a, a pot roast, check roast, whatever. So we're going to have that on Thursday. And then Jim's birthday is actually Friday, so I'll take him out to dinner on Friday for his birthday. And then Christy was going to make him a cannoli cake because he loves cannoli cake. Um, but she said that it looked like a lot. She's got this week off for vacation. She says, even with her vacation, it looks like a lot. So she found a bakery that's going to make it, and I just told her I'd give her the money for the for the bakery cake. So she's going to have a bakery cake. Jim says he doesn't like bakery cakes, but I'm thinking he's going to like this one. And then Jimmy will probably just have a plain old ordinary yellow cake. So we'll have that. So we got that taken care of for the two birthdays for the week. And then my brother Michael's uh, anniversary, Mike and Molly, is on the 9th. I'm not sure how many years it is, though. I'd have to look it up. I'm not positive. I know they went to Vegas and got married, and then when they came back, they had a reception downtown at the Rooster Tail, um, which is, I don't even know if it's still there. I don't think it's still there. I don't know. Anyway, we went there for his reception. He didn't have, he didn't have like a destination wedding where everybody went. He just went with Amy, or with uh, Molly, and uh, they got married, and then they came back and had a big party. <laughs> so that's what they did. And then on the 25th, I think it is, Brooke is going to go for her ultrasound, and we'll find out what my new grandbaby is going to be. We're hoping for a girl. We'll take whatever. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. We'll take whatever. But we're hoping for a girl. Danny, even uh, Sebastian and Oliver say they hope they have a sister. They, 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 they already got a brother. They want a sister now. And uh, there's just not enough girls in this family. <laughs> well, there is. Let's see. There's three girls. Because well, I have two girls, but I consider Kylie my my granddaughter, and then Josh I consider my grandson. His his grandma's still alive, but he she's um, got Alzheimer's, so she doesn't really remember him. And then his grandpa has, has passed, and then my mom and dad are gone. So on that side, they're they're gone too. So that takes care of that, and then I'm trying to get you an update on everything that's going on. Ron had they had to reopen Ron up again for surgery. Um, the machine wasn't doing as well as they thought it would do, so they reopened them. I was so mad at Birdie, though, because I talked to her the night before. He had the certain one I'm trying to think. I was at the hospital all day with Mary on Monday. I think that was it. Yeah, I was with Mary all day on Monday. I was talking to Birdie on Tuesday night, and she was giving me an update on Ron. And uh, I had told her that I was at the hospital all day with, with with Mary. And it was a long day when, you know, I'm not complaining, but, you know, you know, the things you do for love. Like I said the other day, the things you do for love. And so then she had told me that Ron was going to have another surgery the next day. And so I said, oh, okay, well, let me know how it's going to go. And she says, yeah, it should, it should go pretty quick. So it should be fine. And I said, oh, okay. I just assumed, which was my fault, I assumed his sister was going to go with her, Ron's sister. Um... But it turned out that Bertie was there alone at the hospital. She had to be there at 10 o'clock in the morning because the surgery was at 11.30. He did go in for surgery. The surgery was only supposed to be an hour and a half. It ended up being almost four and a half because it was almost till four o'clock. And then to restructure his chest, 
they had a plastic surgeon come in and they put some wiring or something to hold his sternum together. And so he was in surgery for another three and a half hours. And so she was at the hospital all by herself from 10 o'clock in the morning until almost 8.30 at night. And when I found that out, I was so upset with her because I said, why didn't you tell me I would have went? She says, well, you had just gone the other day and you had been there all day with Mary. I go, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Family comes first for me. She should know that. And I should have been there. And so I said, I would have gone. And so she says, no, it's, it's fine. So anyway... He came through the surgery okay. He was in intensive care for two days. Uh, they moved him last night to the heart floor, where he's going to be on the heart floor for three or four days. They're hoping with the surgery he doesn't have to come home with the machine, but he's been in the hospital now two and a half weeks. He's ready to go home. Birdie's ready for him to stay there a little bit longer because um, she's going to have to, um, he's going to still have some drainage tubes that he's going to come home with that she's going to have to, um, as it is tentatively now. Um, the nurse is going to come twice a week or three times a week. But on the opposite days, Bertie's got to empty the, the the tubes. And then she's got to give him a shot each day. She's hoping the shot is right into the, because um, he has a port. She's hoping it's into the port, not into him. I, I don't understand. Bertie took a class to be a phlebi phlebotist, you know, to take blood. And uh, she passed the course and everything, but she, she said she couldn't do it because it just creeped her out. She didn't like doing little ones or, or old people, <laughs> which is mostly the ones that always get it done, it seems like. So um, she knows how to do it. She doesn't like doing it. So she said that she's hoping that that won't have to to, to, to come to pass. So, um, so continue prayers for Ron. Uh, he's getting stronger, anxious to get home. Bertie's anxious for him to stay in the hospital until he's a little bit stronger. But I uh, can completely understand why Ron wants to come home. And so that's Ron's update. Michael is still fighting his infection. He had an upper respiratory infection. I talked to him this morning. He's still kind of raspy. Um, sounding a lot better. Sounding a lot, lot better. But he goes back to the doctor on Monday. And so he seems to think that uh, they're going to um, increase his medication. Because he said he's still not... He's still not 100%. He would put himself at like 75. My brother's 70. He'll be 72 in November. You know, when you get up there in age, it's, you fight off infections a little bit harder. It takes you a little bit longer. But he's he's a fighter, so he'll get that taken care of. And then we got a call from Jim's ins our insurance that Jim's um, for the CPAP machine was approved. And so it came in the mail this morning. So tonight will be the first night that Jim will be wearing that. And our insurance paid for it 100%. And so what the way it works is they consider it a rental for one year. So each month we'll get the insurance company will get a bill and then the insurance company will pay it because it's 100%. And then after a year, then we own it. So if we need replacement parts or something like that, you know, like val not filters or whatever, we'd have to replace them ourselves at that point. Um, from my understanding, and we'll wait a year to see how that goes. Jim saw a commercial the other day with somebody wearing the machine, and it was like up on top of his head, and the air was blowing on his spouse. He said, that's going to probably be me. I says, I don't think so. But I think he'll notice a big difference, and I think that he'll be glad that he got it done. I really do. And then what other news? Oh, Mary has decided she's going to move home. She doesn't like the uh, apartment living. That just doesn't work out. Um, what is it? Green Acres is the place to be. Farm living. <laughs> apartment living is not hers. She does not, her and Don do not like apartment living. So uh, they are in the process right now of hiring somebody. They did get the tree that fell on the roof. That's been repaired. So her roof has been repaired. But she's going to hire somebody to um, put all new flooring in her house because she's got carpeting, which needed to be replaced anyhow. So she's going to get new carpet or new flooring put in. And then she's going to have somebody widen her. Uh, bathroom door and her bedroom door. Her bathroom was already handicapped accessible, so uh, she doesn't have to do any major repairs there other than widening the door. And uh, she's hoping to move in by November 1st back home. So we'll see. They're, they're going to build her a handicap ramp up her porch, too. So she'll be happier. I know she'll be You're always happier at home. I remember when we first moved in here, I was so sick. I, I got some kind of flu or something. I was so sick. And I remember waking Jim up in the middle of the night and asked him to take me home. <laughs> he says, we are home. And I go, no, take me home. I don't feel good. You know, you always want to be home when you're not feeling good. And I think she'll recover better. And Don will be happier because he doesn't drive and everything. The bus is right at the corner of their street. I mean, I know they have, 
they have all that stuff there, but they just it's just not their kind of living. So they, they want to live in their house. They're just going to hire a landscaper to take care of the outdoors. So whatever makes them happy is all that really matters. And then um, I'm trying to think of what else is going on. Denise is doing really well. She actually went driving yesterday. She said that she had to get out of the house. She's like my mother. She, she's like the type that has to go to the store just to buy a pair of socks. <laughs> you know my stories. You know my mother. She used to just leave the house. I got to go. And she'd be gone. She'd come back with a pair of socks. Which might explain my fetish for socks. Because I probably have, oh, without exaggeration, 100 pair of socks. I have... I have so many socks. <laughs> I could never wear all. I could wear a pair of socks every day, well, you know, almost for a year. Never have to worry about washing them. <laughs> I just love socks. So, but she's doing well. Michael's doing well. Mary's doing well. Jim's doing well. My kids are doing good. Um, David's working like a fool, working seven days a week, loving every minute of it. He's saving for a house. So he's working on that. Yeah, everything's pretty good. The only thing that's kind of... Uh, Falling to the wayside is my eating plans. I'm just kind of feeling kind of slackish. I'm just kind of feeling kind of stuck. It's just um, a good part of me wants to lose weight, but just as much of a part of me just says, you know, eh, you're in your 70s. But then I'm thinking, well, you want to be in your 90s, so you got to get going. So, I mean, there's there's both sides. you got to look at things from both sides. Like Judy Collins says, both sides now. I've looked at things from both sides now because I really have – um, I just wish I have that, um, that sugar addiction still in me and I have to go through a complete withdrawal until I go through a complete withdrawal of that sugar. Uh, I'm going to be tempted and I, I know this, you know, but, uh, just kind of feeling kind of stuck and just, it's the seasons changing, getting stuck in the house, um, tired of the same old food all the time, tired of cooking, to be honest with you. I'm just tired of cooking. I'd love to eat out all the time, but then, you know, I would gain, I'd be as big as a house. I'd never be able to get into my house because I'd be as big as a house. But I've been craving lately Mexican and Chinese, which are two things that Jim doesn't like, so that's why I haven't had them because uh, he doesn't like either one of those. I just have to... I just have to work to get my frame of mind back. I just uh, Getting out of the bed at a halfway decent time especially now when the weather is not uh, conducive to getting outside. I'm in no big hurry to get out of the bed. So it means I'm not in a big hurry to get into the bed at night. So I'm starting to stay up even later. I'm drawing pictures on this pad paper. i got to stop. So, um, but, and I have decided to keep that yellow coat. I'm going to keep that coat. I'm just, uh, I haven't even got the other one yet. I'm just going to, if the zipper breaks, I just, I, put it, I really like that coat. So it may be in my best interest. I don't really zip a coat that much, to be honest with you. So I could just, it has uh, Velcro that I can flap it closed, if that's the case. Just hate paying that much money for a jacket that the zipper doesn't work. But I really like that coat, so I'm decided I'm just going to keep it. Okay, that's going to do it for now. Um, just kind of feeling kind of sluggish, kind of stuck, kind of stuck in a rut. Stuck in a rut. And I'm, I'm done. I'm just done. I stick a fork in me. I'm done. <laughs> so anyway, that's the update for what's going on in my life. And uh, I continued prayers for everybody. I would appreciate it. And just going to sit here and watch my birds. There's no birds on my feeder right now, although I did fill all my feeders up yesterday. So I got them. They're all rats to go. They're all ready to eat. <laughs> okay. I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave you. But I must. See you guys tomorrow.